Welcome back. Today we're continuing the work on the bookcase and it's the turn of the raised panel doors. That sounds interesting. Stick around. I think that raised panel doors is one of the most useful techniques in furniture making. And not only does it give us a really traditional great look for doors on furniture, it can give us tall side panels in bookcases, it can give us short side panels in sideboards, you can use the techniques for dividing partitions within furniture, you can use a technique for creating dust panels at the base of drawers, in chest of drawers units, it's a really versatile tech. Neat, and you'll hear it called a number of things, cope and stick, raised panel doors, panel and frame, and once you've mastered it, it's something you can use time and time again. And the great thing is, it's really not that hard. If we're using a router table and a dedicated bit, we can knock these things out pretty damn quickly. Let's start by looking at some terminology. So what you're basically going to be doing is creating a frame. And a frame has two long pieces and two cross pieces. And in the center of that frame, you're then going to put a panel. And it may be a flat panel, or it may be some sort of ornate raised panel. The side pieces here, these are known as styles. S-T-I-L-E-S. -E and the cross pieces, these are known as rails and the middle piece is obviously known as a panel. Now it's called panel and frame joinery obviously because you've got a panel and when you connect your rails and styles together you have a frame. It's called raised panel joinery because you have a panel that's raised in the centre. And it's called stick and cope joinery because into the styles you cut a groove and that groove is known as a stick. And on the end of the rails, you put a small tenon and a profile, and that tenon and profile combination is known as a cope. So it's also called cope and stick joinery. Now, in our door, we're going to do something slightly different, and we're going to introduce a, an additional feature. So I'm still having my styles. I'm still having my rails. But I'm going to put in what's known as a cross rail, which is a third rail that sits in the middle. And then I'll have panels in the top part and panels in the base part that will indeed be raised panel joinery. Now I want to put that middle rail in for a couple of reasons. The doors that we're making are reasonably long. They're just over a metre long. And when you have long doors made out of wood, not so much a problem in man-made materials, but in natural wood, the longer the panel, the more chance is for that door to twist over time. And if that door twists, it won't lay nice and flush onto your bookcase. The middle rail gives it a bit more strength and stops that door twisting. And the second reason, it's just going to look nice on our design. We have eight of these square units here. I'm having a door on this end, and we're going to have a door on this end as well. And I want to continue the illusion of these large squares here. So I want a square panel here and a square panel here with a frame around it. And I just think that will be a nice, pretty design feature. So that's what we're going to do. Now the first thing I want to do is to measure out the height of my doors and for that I'm going to measure from the top of the unit to the top of the drawer that we put together in the last episode. That measurement is 1027 and on this side that measurement is 1027 as well. So we're in pretty good shape because we took the time to make sure it was all level when we put the frame together, this is now paying dividends for us in our final appearance. 1027. 1027. However, I want to make sure that I've got some gaps around that door. Now, in the last episode, you'll remember that we went to great lengths to make sure that we had a four millimeter gap between each of those draw fronts. And I want to make sure I've also got that same four millimeter gap 
between the top of my drawer and the base of my door. So I want to allow for that four millimeter gap. So 1027 now needs to have four millimeters taken away from it. Now as a design feature, I'm also going to put some sort of molding on the top of this unit. Remember, I'm thinking of putting a temperature gauge, a clock, a humidity gauge into that panel because that's useful information to have in the workshop. And that molding is going to sit proud of this unit by 18 millimeters. 18 millimeters being the thickness of the stock that we're using. So when the doors close, you'll have this nice flush surface all the way through here. So I also want a four millimeter gap between the top of my drawer and the bottom of that molding when we come to fit it. We know that this is 18 millimeters and we know that half of 18 millimeters is nine millimeters. So therefore I want to have my door stopping two millimeters below that nine millimeter mark, that center point mark. Or nine plus two is 11. I want my door stopping 11 millimeters down from the top of this unit, 11 millimeters. So I also want to reduce 1027 by 11 millimeters. So therefore I want to make my styles 1012 long and that's going to give me that four millimeter gap that's beginning to be consistent throughout the finished joinery on this unit. I now need to think about how wide these doors want to be. Well, that's really quite an easy measurement. My doors are gonna be the same width as the drawer unit. And that's because this profile that we put on here is going to continue up the edge of the door panels. And that's going to give a nice run through line and a nice feature when we're finished. So that's flush to the end. And therefore this measurement needs to be four, nine, seven. So this measurement is four, nine, seven long. Four, nine, seven. Remember that's not the length of the rail, that's the overall length of the frame for the door. We'll come back and calculate this in a second. But I want to take that 497 and see whether that is a consistent measurement throughout the door length. Now I know that 497 here takes me to the center point of this panel, minus two millimeters, four millimeter gap. But I'm going to measure this outside edge here and I'm getting 51. Here, that's also bang on 51. And at the top, that is also 51. And again, that's important. <clears throat> if that measurement wasn't consistent between these two panels, once I mount the door onto here, this edge, the one that's gonna be visible, will run out in relationship to the edge of the door. Now you could obviously alter the shape of the door to fit that, and if that wasn't consistent, that's exactly what you do, but we're again in good shape on this one because of that care we took earlier in the project. So this is a stock that we're going to use for both our styles and our rails, and this stock is 64 millimeters in width. So the actual length of this rail is going to be 497 minus 64 minus 64. 497 minus 64 minus 64 equals 369 millimeters. However, that's not my final cut length. On either end of the rail, there's going to be a cope. And in effect, a cope is a small tenon and a profiled cut that matches the profile we're gonna put onto the styles and rails. So we now also need to allow for that tenon. I don't know what that size is yet. We're gonna to have to look at the router bit that we're going to use and work that out. Now these are the router bits that we are going to use. I've got one here that's going to cut the cope and I've got one here that's going to cut the stick. The stick is the groove that sits inside your styles and rails and your cope is the profile that goes on the end of your rails allowing these things to connect together. So this is the one that's going to cut our cope and the shape it's going to cut obviously is the inverse of the shape of the router. So it's going to take a top part of my stock, it's going to leave a tenon in my stock, and it's going to put a profile on the outside of my stock that looks like this. So the tenon length is going to be from the outside cutting point to the inside edge of the bearing that we use for reference. 
And that distance from the outside edge of the bearing to the outside cutting edge of the bit itself is exactly half an inch. And I know that half an inch is 12.7 millimeters. So I need to put 12.7 millimeters back on this 369 measurement and then that will be the final length I cut my rails to. So the overall length of the rail is going to be 394.4 millimeters. That allows for the 12 and a bit millimeter tenon in either side and giving me an overall internal width of 369 and an overall external width of 497. And that's how you weigh up the size of a rail. It's all driven by the size of the bit and the tenon that that bit makes. Yours will be different, work it out, but use the same technique. Now in our case, 394.4 is gonna be pretty hard to cut accurately. So what happens if I take this down to 394? All that means is that 497 would reduce by 0.4 of a millimeter. So the overall width here would be 496.6 millimeters. It means that my panel width would reduce from 369 by 0.4 millimeters. It does not affect these joints here inside the rail. So as long as we're somewhere around about 394, that's okay. So we're laying for 394.4. In reality, we may end up with 394.5 or 394.3, but when we fit the door, we will make sure that we line the door up to this edge here of the drawer. And that will give us that consistent line that we're looking for. And any variance we will lose on the outside edge here that your eye is never gonna see. And remember, we're talking about 0.1 or 0.2 millimeter variance and that's pretty good tolerance. So that's what we are going to do. So with that done, I now know I can come along and cut out everything I need for this door 101, two, and 394.4 millimeters. I need one, two styles, one, two, three rails. I've set my bench dog fence to give me a cut slightly longer than 1012 and that's because I want a square end on this material. And for an experimentation, I'm going to be using the bench dog fence to line up all my cuts because I want to see how accurate that is. I have calibrated it to my table and I've calibrated it to my rail and I'm making a video that should be out Tuesday next week that will talk you through how I've done that. But I wanna put it through its paces to see what it looks like so I can talk about it in that video. So you'll see me using the bench dog fence to set up all these cuts. So I'm cutting something slightly longer than the 1012 I need for the first cut because I want a square end on my styles. So here's my setup. I have my material clamped flush to my bench dog fence and I have all that clamped in position. I'm using the bench dog rail guide to hold this and the bench dog collars to set that to the right thickness and I've clamped a sacrificial piece at the end to make sure I don't get tear out as I cross cut this material. I've got my 28 teeth per inch blade in here and we did a review on that blade in this video and I really like that blade as you will see. So let's go ahead and make this cut. So I'm gonna flip this over to maintain the same reference surface and I now want to cut this down to its final length of 1012. So I'm gonna set 1012 on my bench dog fence, take no other measurements and we'll see how we get on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my second style down to that same length, flag stops in place, same technique, that should give me two identical pieces of material. And that now gives me two pieces of materials that are exactly the same length, and I mean exactly the same length. And that setup works really well, as accurate as it needs to be, and everything is beautifully square, and everything is the same length. Really pleased. So now I've got my styles cut, I want to cut my rails at 394.4 millimetres. So I'm using another offcut of wood. This piece of material is actually oh, 884 wide, and we know that we're looking for 64. So we're going to have to rip this down by 20 
millimeters. So what we'll do, we'll cross cut this to 394.4 times 3 because we need 1, 2, 3 and that's just under what 1200. So I'll cross cut this to square and then make a single piece of 1200 and then we'll rip that down to the 64 width and then we'll cut out the three pieces that we need. And now you can see the basics of our frame. And what I'm looking for is all these joints to be reasonably tight at this point, all the ends flush and everything is. And if that bench dog system has worked, these should be square. Look at that. This is not fastened together yet, but look, you can already see the accuracy that we're getting in our work. That one's slightly, there we go. Yeah, and this is gonna work incredibly well. Pleased, pleased with that. Okay, I now want to work out what looks nicest for me. What layout do I want to go for? So we'll start looking at the styles. And straight away, I don't like this. I don't like these pieces here. I don't want that showing on my door. So that's going to be nice. Pretending that this is my top. That's looking okay. Let's look at this one here. And again, the rejecting because of that. But that's looking okay. Yeah, that looks pretty reasonably good. Um, quite like that one. Probably want that one like that. Oh, and that's a nice. I like that side there. Yeah, so that's it. So that's the layout I think I'm going to go with on this door. So now I can mark these. This is known as the top rail. This one is known as the base rail, and this one is known as the intermediary or the cross rail. This is my left style, and this is my left, so, no it's not, <laughs> this is my right style. And these arrows here are just showing me where my inside edge is going to be cut. And that's useful when we come to the router table. Okay. Joint A, joint A, joint B, joint B. Joint C, joint C, joint D, joint D, joint E, joint E, joint F, and joint F. And on this one, I'm going to, oops, lazy. On this one, I want to put a stick on either side of that piece of material. So that just helps us when we come to the router table, so we make sure we're cutting in the right direction. So this is the bit that we are going to use. And you can see this top cutter here is going to cut what in effect is the mortise inside this rail. And this bottom one here is going to cut the profile. And it's going to be cutting the material in that type of orientation, with this centerpiece making the groove that will be inside here, the mortise, and this outer one here, putting a nice profile on 
the edge and that will cut the stick for us pretty well. Now I'm going to set this one up in the router table so the mortise, the groove, is in the centre of the material which is going to be round about there. So we'll go to the table and we'll look at setting that up. So I've dropped the router bit in and the first thing I want to do is to line it up for height. Now remember, it's this part of the cutter here that is cutting the groove and I want that groove centre point more or less on the material. So I can bring the material in and you can see that that's pretty close but if anything it's a little bit too high. So we'll just drop that down a touch. Try that. And now that's looking a little bit too low, so I'll just bring it up a smidge. And I think that now looks pretty much centre where I want it to be. So we'll go ahead and we'll make a test cut at this in a few minutes. Then I want to bring in my fence. Obviously we need to make sure that the fence is wide enough when it's locked into position to clear that bit. I don't want to mangle my fence and that looks pretty good to me. And I want to line the fence up so the outside edge of this bearing is flush with the fence. Come with a straight edge. And that looks good there. And I'll lock that into position and just check myself. Looks good. Everything looks clear. So I'm going to come in with a test piece. Now when you're making these cuts, remember those arrows that we put on? To say, that's where I want the groove to be. And remember we made some marks, I just used the name of the material, style or rail, that represent my face edge. You cut this with the face down and those arrows against the fence. So if you've suddenly got a piece of material and you're about to cut it and there's no arrows against the fence, your material's the wrong way round. If you can see any writing, your material's the wrong way round. So arrows to the fence, face down, and then we can go ahead and we can make this test cut. So you can see what we're looking for. It's given me this nice groove down the centre and it's given me this nice rounded profile on the inner edge and that looks pretty good to me and that'll just give it a nice finish when the door is assembled and don't forget that on the outside edge we're out another profile to match the one that we made in the drawer unit so that's looking quite nice I think so I'm happy with that that looks good it looks like in the right place so I'm going to go ahead and cut out all the sticks on all my pieces <laughs> Now this is the piece, the interim rail that sits in the middle. So on this one, I want to make a groove on both sides in order to fit the two panels together. So you can see I've now got the stick on both sides of that middle panel and I've got the profile on both sides as well. And that looks pretty nice. So the next job is I now need to make the cope that fits into here. And for that we use the other router bit. So this is that other router bit and you can see it's the gap between this top cutter here and this bottom cutter here that is going to be the tenon that fits inside our groove. So we need to set this up to make sure that the tenon comes in to the centre of that groove and everything lines up. Again, you're going to work face down. What you're trying to do is to get the bottom cutting edge of this top cutter here to be level with this inside face of the groove. And if anything, it's a little bit too high, and I'm not talking much at all. And we're going to try that there as our test cut. We bring in the fence again make sure we're clear and we're now lining that center um, and now we're lining the center bearing up with our fence which is there so if it all set up we can now come in with another scrap piece of wood again your face is going to be down we're going to use a piece of waste wood to prevent tear out on the back edge and I'm going to use 
the mitre gauge to give me a cross cuff. Just break away any of these loose bits that are just gathered on the wood that just simply break off. Coming with our test piece and that should slot together like that. Now if we've got this right, these two surfaces here should be beautifully flush. We should have a joint in the end that looks like that. It should also be nice and flush on the back and it should be a good tight joint. And we felt really lucky and managed to get that first time and trust me, that doesn't always happen. So I'm good, that's nicely set up, we're happy with that, so we're going to call that a good job. So with that done, I can now go ahead and cut all my pieces. Now depending on, the, depending on the material thickness and how you've got this thing set up, you'll sometimes end up with this thin piece of wood left over. The easiest and the cleanest way of removing that is using a marking knife, a sharp marking knife and a square. So just with the marking knife, just go into that skin, find the end of the wood where you want the joint to be and then slide your square up to your marking knife. And then simply score across with your marking knife and then you'll find that these just quite happily break off. And that leaves you this very, very nice pristine line here. And then, all things being equal, this should now all fit together and give us quite a nice frame for our panel door. And there we have it, we have our frame for our door. It should all be self-squaring, we've done our job well, and it is. Careful not to move it. Oops. Yep. And that all looks pretty good to me, so a job's a good one. So that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll look at the raised panel itself, how we size that, how we cut it. And we need to make a slight modification to the CMS to allow us to create those panels. We'll look at that next time. See you soon.